यूपमाद्यम प्रभवति जगता अनेकधा अनुग्रहाय प्रक्षीण क्लेशराशि विषम विषधर अनेक वक्सुभोगी सर्वज्ञान प्रसूति भुजगपरिक प्रीत यम देवोहिशा सवो व्यात सित विमलतनु योगदो योगयुक्ता योगे न चित्त पदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक यो पाकोत्त प्रवर मुनी पतंजलि प्राजलिरानस्मी आबापुषाकार शंखचक्रासीधारिण सहस्रशिश श्वेत प्रणमा पतंजलि श्रीमते अनंताय नागराजाय नमो नमः पातंजल महाभाष्य चरक प्रतिसंस्कृत मनोवाय दोषा हर्त्रे अहिपत नमः so last time we were discussing the sutra on abhyasa we discussed the qualities of abhyasa such as dirga kala nairantarya satkara adara asevitah drida bhumi so <clears throat> we concluded the sutra on abhyasa that patanjali has presented as one of the ingredients towards reaching the state of chitta vritti nirodha today we will continue with the second ingredient that patanjali has presented which is called vairagyam drishtanu shravika vishaya vitrishnasya vashikara samya vairagyam few sutras ago patanjali defines that we need two things called abhyasa main vairagyam to reach the state of chitta vritti nirodha abhyasam is defined as practice vairagyam is defined as detachment in generally but patanjali is defining what is detachment what is vairagyam through this sutra drishtanu shravika vishaya vitrishnasya vashikara samya vairagyam generally speaking patanjali says there are two kinds of objects drishta vishaya and anushravika vishaya there are two kinds of objects that we can experience in this world one is drishta vishaya which means objects that we can actually perceive what we can see through the senses it means for example objects that are visible to the eyes objects that are hearable objects that we can smell objects that we can taste objects that we can touch etc through the five different senses these are called drishta vishaya anushravika vishaya are objects that we hear about 
objects that we cannot necessarily see but objects that we can hear about for example commentators such as vyasa krishnamacharya they are saying these objects includes objects that are in the divine world like in heaven for example somebody may say oh in heaven there is this and this and that there is beautiful gardens there is beautiful palaces <clears throat> there is so many nice horses etc these are things that we hear about we cannot see directly we cannot experience it directly even the concept of heaven swargam is an object that is not experienceable by the senses so that is what is called anushravika vishaya now what is the problem with these objects now the problem with objects is that they are trapping us objects they are trapping us we get trapped by the object now when we get trapped by the object what does it mean that means we want to experience bhogam of the object so for example we want to experience the object whether it is a visible object or a object that we hear about etc <coughs> for example there is the music season in in chennai and there are a lot of musicians who come and sing so these are objects that we want to experience by hearing then there is food festival that comes these are objects that we want to experience by tasting etc similarly there is photographic exhibition cinemas etc that are objects that we want to experience through vision etc so we want to experience objects bhogam and therefore we somehow get trapped by bhogam it's a very simple formula you can say when there is bhogam there is no yogam bhoga and yoga are kind of opposites when you want to experience and enjoy objects that means you are detached you are going further away from the yoga state that is why patanjali in the second chapter says that matter in this world is there for two purposes bhoga and apavarga either you are experiencing the objects or you become free from objects you cannot do both at the same time so that is why patanjali is saying that whether it is drishta vishaya or anushravika vishaya we must have a detachment from these objects we must have a detachment from these objects because if we are not detached from these objects but rather we are attached to these objects chitta vritti nirodha is not going to be possible chitta vritti nirodha is not going to be possible now we can have a discussion why is this not possible we can intellectually analyze this and there is answers from the point of view of yoga itself so when you have to experience objects your dominant gunas are essentially rajas and tamas because the senses when the body and the senses have to experience an object there is the necessity for rajas and tamas to be active there is a message that goes from our mind to the object object to the mind and that movement of messages is rajas but at the same time we are experiencing the object taste or smell etc that have very much an impact based on memory and remembrance etc that is the dominance of tamas that is what is holding all this memories of things so when rajas and tamas is dominant then automatically sattva is not dominant sattva gunam is not dominant and it is only the sattva guna that is that is going to take us close to the chitta vritti nirodha it is not rajoguna or the tamo gunam so that is why logically we can rationalize and we can easily understand that as long as we are experiencing an object how an experience of an object happens it is through rajas and tamas that is why it is called bhogam we do not 
enjoy <coughs> something when there is a sattva guna. <coughs> the same food when you eat with a sattva guna, <coughs> you don't eat it as an enjoyment. You just eat it as a necessity. You don't eat it as an enjoyment. You don't really enjoy it. You eat it for survival. You don't eat it for anything else. The same object can be looked at with sattva guna or with rajas and tamo guna. When we are looking through rajas or tamas, it is coming from ragam. 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 Raga means attachment. That is why it is tamas. And raga also means to enjoy. That is why it is rajas. Raga has two syllables. The ra syllable and the ga syllable. The ra syllable represents the rajoguna. The ga syllable represents the tamoguna because the word ga is heaviness. <coughs> So, uh, raga is a combination of rajas and tamas. So, often when we enjoy objects with rajas and tamas as the dominant factor, <coughs> then we are not closer to yoga because we are going further away from the sattva guna. Whereas, when we allow vairagyam <coughs> to dominate, that is what is vigataha ragaha vairagyam. The word vairagya means there is absence of desire. That is vairagyam. When there is absence of desire, that is called vairagyam, and that is what takes us closer to the state of yoga. But all the people in the world, sometimes we have to experience objects. We cannot live without objects. All of us are dependent on objects. So, how can we be detached? This is the question that is asked. So, what vairagyam is, is to experience an object or a vishaya for what it is worth, but not based on desire. But not based on desire. We have to eat food. <coughs> what is the purpose of food? Purpose of food is to provide us nourishment. Purpose of food is to provide us nourishment. Now, if we eat food as a source of nourishment, that is eating with vairagyam. Whereas, if we eat food as if it is enjoyment of the senses, oh, I went to this restaurant, it was so nice, I want to enjoy it again, that is eating food as bhogam. Then the difference happens. That's why. Vairagyam does not mean that you run away from objects. This is very important clarification. That is why Patanjali clarifies this by saying, <coughs> Drishta Anushravika Vishaya Vitrishnasya Vashikara Samya Vairagyam Vitrishnam. Vitrishnam means a thirst, absence of thirst. We don't crave an object. There is not the craving or a desire for an object. <clears throat> because when there is a desire for an object, the gunas change and the relationship with an object is changing. The relationship with an object is changing. <clears throat> for example, <clears throat> let us say we are fans of a game called cricket. There are two teams are playing. We have an attachment to one team. There is a desire for one team to win. That is ragam. When that raga is there, <coughs> we don't see the game from a neutral match, neutral perspective. We don't see it as, oh, it's a good cricket match. Because we are biased towards one team than the other. Whereas, if we are detached from both the teams and only as observe as an observer, then there is a functioning of vairagyam. Then we are looking at the game as if it is a game between two teams. We are not influenced by this or that, but we are just observing this wonderful game and that is all. This, that is what is called as vitrishnasim. There is no thirst. 
say oh if this team is not playing i will not watch that is not correct from a point of view of vairagyam it may be correct from the point of view of raga you want to support one team that means you are a fan of that team then you have to have ragam but that is what creates suffering why because if the team does not win we suffer the team wins we are happy it gives us it is keeping us in the extremes whereas if we are looking at it from a point of view of detachment we are not affected whether one team is winning or one team is losing because we are looking at it from whether it the game was good or not from neutral perspective the same way when we look at food or music or other forms of entertainment sometimes we get trapped by the desire for having that object rather than the object itself and that is the problem that is why patanjali defines vairagyam through the relationship we have with an object the problem is not the object the problem is the relationship we have with the object and the relationship we have we have with the object can be based on ragam or vairagyam and when the relationship with objects are based on raga we are always suffering because that raga traps us the energy of raga is very strong it traps us whereas vairagyam is more free more liberating <clears throat> this is very important to understand because we cannot blame objects patanjali says object is not at fault there is lot of sweet shops in chennai grand sweets uh, ananda sweets krishna sweets every kind of sweets are there bakery adia bangalore bakery macronet bakery so many bakeries are there they are all making products that product is not telling you come to me you are going towards that product you cannot blame that product say you are there therefore i am suffering you ignore it and go away you will not suffer that's why chennai has so much diabetes because people are not able to resist the re temptation for that the object is not at fault it is the relationship we have that is at fault that is what patanjali says even in the third chapter or fourth chapter he says vastu samye chitta bhedat tayoho vibhakta pantaha in front of an object there may be two different people with two different mind structures they have two different relationship to the same object therefore two different paths are established the same object may be interesting for somebody may not be interesting for somebody else same object can be an object of desire for somebody may not be an object of desire for somebody else a young man who is a bachelor may be attracted to a woman a young woman but a monk is not at all interested he doesn't see the woman at all so the same person has two different relationship with two different people therefore you cannot blame the object sometimes because it is easy for us we blame the object and that is what patanjali says vitrishnasyam means there is a lack of thirst from your side not from the object side objects do not have a thirst they are there so there you go to a bakery there is some cakes if you don't buy it the cake is not going to be disappointed it will just be there and after some time it will be thrown away it will not have any feelings whereas you are the one who is getting disappointed or happy depending on the relationship you have so in sometimes sometimes we take this word vairagyam very literally and we say vairagyam means to run away from objects <clears throat> we run away from objects we stay away from the object that is not correct that's why patanjali uses the word vashikaram vashikaram means to master if you say what is vairagyam vairagyam does not mean do not go near cake shop that is not vairagyam vairagyam is even in front of all the cakes you don't have a desire to enjoy them you don't have the desire that is vairagyam that is what is called vashikaram vashikaram means to master avasham 
vasham karoti iti vairagyam that which you cannot control you are now controlling you are under you are under your control not under the control of some other entity that is called vashikaram that vashikara is necessary for vairagyam because the control is in us it is not in the object we cannot say oh the object is very tempting oh it is so attractive i got seduced by this it was the problem with the object i should not go there again that is a very simple low level of vairagyam that is also discussed in the bhagavad gita saying stay away from objects if you cannot have the strength to overcome this some people for example we use this in medical field when somebody is addicted to alcohol or to drugs etc we tell them stay away from alcohol stay away from drugs because in that state the person strength is weak and therefore they are not able to resist the temptation for these objects and therefore we say stay away from them but that is the beginning state <clears throat> why i am saying this is because vairagyam requires strength vairagyam is not possible for weak persons that is why the word used by patanjali is vashikaram vashikaram means somebody who has great strength <clears throat> somebody who has great strength vairagyam is a sign of strength vairagyam is not possible for the weak persons so we have to be strong to have vairagyam because the temptations make us weak ragam makes us weak vairagyam makes us strong is also the teaching in the bhagavad gita that krishna is receiving from arjuna about the importance of vairagyam because krishna is saying vairagyam is a strength of a warrior vairagyam is a strength of the strong person dhiraha a strong person must have vairagyam why because objects are going to be everywhere there is no place in this world that you can go which is free from objects maybe in your house you have some distractions maybe the television maybe uh, <clears throat> other family members and they are distracting you so you say oh this place is very distracting i go to the beach now in the beach you will see other distractions there will be maybe the waves maybe there are people who are jogging maybe there are the sales person who come and sell you mangoes and uh, groundnuts and peanuts and other things so you say oh beach is not good i go somewhere else you go into the forest maybe there are photographers in the forest who are photographing wild animals maybe there is birds there is this you can never go to a place in this world that has no objects because objects as defined by patanjali is not only physical object it is objects that you can see it is objects that you can hear about so there is no escape from vishayam but there is escape from the relationship with the objects you can be either attached to an object or detached and that is why patanjali says drishta anushravika vishaya vidrishnasya vashikara samnya vairagyam there has to be a great strength that you have that you do not have the thirst for such objects you do not have a thirst for that objects you don't desire it the problem is the moment you desire you become weak the moment you desire you become weak that is why patanjali uses this very strong word called vashikara samnya vairagyam and vashikara samnya vairagyam is a very important ingredient of chitta vritti nirodha because abhyasa and vairagya have to go hand in hand we have discussed this there is no point in doing all the practice but then being attached to some things it is like for example a simple example somebody is diabetic and they go to the doctor the doctor will say okay you have to do two things 
वन टेक दिस मेडिकेशन टू स्टे अवे फ्रॉम शुगर सम पीपल विल थिंक ओह आई एम टेकिंग मेडिकेशन वाई शुड आई नॉट स्टे अवे फ्रॉम शुगर देर इज नो यूज बिकॉज Abhyasa is taking the medication. Vairagyam is not to be attracted to the sugar items. There is no use in doing one if you are not doing the other. It's almost like it is negating the effect of the other. So that is why, just like the practice has to be drida bumi, strong foundation. We have discussed this in the sutra last time. Drida bumi Abhyasa has to have strong foundation. Similarly, vairagyam has to be strong as well. That is why he is using the word vashikara samya vairagyam. There is no use in having strong practice and weak vairagyam. You can take very big medicines now for diabetes. They are size of bullets. So you can say the medicine is very strong, sir. It will take care of my sugar. Why should I eat? Not eat sugar. We can say that. but it is not helpful strong medicine means strong vairagyam should be there that is why patanjali is using both in abhyasam and vairagyam words that indicate great strength drida bhumi means very strong foundation practice must have strong foundation vairagyam must have vashikaram it must be very very strong it must be very very strong only then we are moving closer to the state of chitta vritti niroda that is why vairagyam is defined in this way that drishta anushravika vishaya vitrishnasya vashikara samya vairagyam the problem with our human system is that sometimes we are not always the master Sometimes there is something called the gunas that take over. That is what is called sattva, rajas, and tamas. Especially these fellows, tamas and rajas are very dangerous. They take over. You may want to be under control, but somehow the gunas change. We are seeing this in so many <coughs> cases in the mythological story. When you look at great sages like Vishwamitra. he is doing great penance he is doing such great penance and then suddenly some great apsara called menaka comes and dances in front of him trying to distract him poor sage gets distracted and all the practice that he has done loses its power then he has to start all over again now if that is the case for great sages like Vishwamitra what is the case for people like us that's why Vishwamitra is so great because he tried again and again and again until he succeeded he mastered the vairagyam not only with this but he also mastered the vairagyam with ego he was doing great tapas he gained great strength when he gained great strength he became a bit egoistic so when trishanku came to him and said please send me to heaven Vishwamitra said oh sure i have the power to send you to heaven i will send you he was sending him he used all the power to send him to heaven he, trishanku gets rejected by heaven vishwamitra says no problem even if you get rejected there i will create a heaven around you we know the story of what is called trishanku swarga he creates that what does he do he loses all his energy and power because he wanted to prove that he was so great ego is a tamas dominant vishaya ego is tamasic you have to be detached from that as well he loses that as well so he has to start again so the gunas are taking over sometime <coughs> sometimes you may go to a party you may be very disciplined you don't want to indulge in any of the alcohol or sweets or other things but the energy of the party becomes very rajasic very tamasic it intoxicates you even without your knowledge and the gunas change and then before you realize you have already engaged in a relationship with the object and therefore you collapse 
That's why Patanjali presents one more sutra on the Vairagyam saying even if you are very strong, like Vishwamitra was so strong, sometimes the gunas are more strong than you. Tat param purushakyatehe gunavai trishnyam. The gunas make you behave a certain way towards the object. You may not want to engage with the object, you are consciously trying to avoid it. But the gunas take over and you don't realize that power of the guna and it makes you relate with the object and then you suffer. And then what? You are no more close to Chitta Vritti Nirodha, you go further away. Therefore, Patanjali says, there is a vairagyam of the highest category, paravairagyam, tatu param purushakyate. There is a vairagyam of the highest category. That comes when you have mastered the gunas by what? By having the concept of purushakyati. Purushakyati means a state of viveka. That you know the difference between purusha and prakriti. You realize. In some ways in English we use the simple word self-realization. You realize yourself. Self does not mean identity of ego. Self here means the purusha. The consciousness, the jivatma. The moment you have realized that, and the word is realization, it is not to know. Intellectually, we can know what is purusha, what is prakriti. In theory, we know. You study a little bit of Sankhya philosophy or yoga philosophy, in theory, you will know what is purusha, what is prakriti. But in reality, we are not live, knowing that by experience, by our life. And that is not Purushakyati. Purushakyati means you live as a self-realized person. When the self-realization happens, the self is, the Purusha is more strong than the Prakriti. The Purusha is more stronger than the Gunas. Therefore, even the Gunas will not be able to master you. It will not be able to affect you in a negative manner. And when you have achieved that state, that is called Paravairagyam and certainly that Paravairagyam will not only lead you to Chitta Vritti Nirodha, but it will lead you further to what is known as the state of Kaivalyam or Moksha or liberation. That is the power of Paravairagyam that all the Acharyas have talked about, whether it is uh, Ramanuja Acharya in the <coughs> Vedanta Sutra commentary or in the Bhagavad Gita commentary or Vyasa or Patanjali or Vedanta Deshika or Krishna Macharya. So many of these people, they talk about what is called Paravairagyam. In fact, the great Acharya Vedanta Deshika himself has written even a poem about this called Vairagya Panchakam. Explaining the greatness of Vairagyam, especially the Paravairagyam, the highest Vairagyam. And that, that is the time when the Gunas also retreat from you. They don't bother you. Therefore, your relationship with the objects will not be based on sensual relationship. It will be based on a higher form of relationship that is free from desire. And that is when we are close to the state of Chitta Vrittini Rodha. So that is explained in this sutra. <clears throat> Tat param purushakyatehe guna vaitrishnyam. So two sutras are very important in regards to vairagyam. One defines what is Vairagyam and one says what is the Paravairagyam, the highest Vairagyam. Now both Vairagyam, both the Vashikara Vairagyam as well as Paravairagyam are important. Vashikara Vairagyam is very important to take us closer to the state of Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Paravairagyam is very important that it takes us closer to the state of freedom or kaivalyam. And that is why Patanjali presents both. And in this, by explaining the Vairagya Sutras, Patanjali concludes one section of the Sutras that starts from the Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tannirodaha. 
where he is presented what are the what is the manner in which we have to reach the state of chitta vritti nirodha which needs two aspects one is called abhyasam and one is called vairagyam and both are important and both have to be very strong abhyasam drida bhumi vairagyam with vashikaram and unless you do not have both of these strengths we will not be able to experience the real power of yoga